the most popular Greek dip would have to be tara masalata, and I adore making it from scratch at home. So first you need to get your hands on some fish roe. So if you can get it from cod or carp, that's fantastic, but I've got some mullet roe here. This is really easy to find at very good quality Greek delis. They've got lots of this paste and it comes in a little 100 gram can. So that's it there. We're going to place it into a food processor. And before we start adding anything else, we need to get our bread soaked. So we need about three slices of really stale bread. So don't waste your bread. There's always so many good uses for it. And I'm just going to speed up the soaking process by cutting this a little bit. And that goes into some water. Now, and we want to leave it there for about three minutes. So back to the food processor. A little bit of garlic. I suggest just using a little fine grater and add about half of this garlic clove. We'll have a taste and if you feel that it needs a little bit more, by all means add some. But you don't want this garlic to override every other flavour in here. So a little bit of garlic. And usually you would use a salad onion, so a small white bulbed onion. But if you can't get that, spring onions work a treat. Just the white part of the spring onion. So I've got five here and I'm just going to just cut them into three. Just the white part. That can go in along with just the zest of one lemon. And we want the juice of the lemon too. So we'll cut that in half. And I'm gonna use my nifty little juicer to squeeze out as much of that juice and leave all of those seeds behind. Move this over. And now for our bread. So squeeze out all of that water and just separate that into our food processor. So take your time doing this just to get it all out because we want it almost to be really doughy. See that? Perfect consistency. Now we can put the lid on and start to blitz it. And I'm going to emulsify this with some oil. Now I'm not using just any oil, I'm using grapeseed oil. You could also use vegetable oil if you like, but the main thing here is you want a really neutral oil. So again, we can taste all the other flavors. So we start with two cups of oil and we'll slowly add it in until it really comes together nicely. Right, this is almost done. Have a look at that. It's super glossy, smells sensational. This is where I taste it to see if it needs a little bit more lemon. Oh, that is the best dip ever. And there's enough there to feed about 10 people. So when you're entertaining, get the tara masalata out and you'll really shock your guests because a lot of people think it's that really bright pink colour when in actual fact it's this really light beige colour. With a spatula I like to just take this whipped deliciousness out of our food processor and just smooth it over. Gosh, doesn't that look good? It's perfect. A little bit more. This other half lemon we can add to our board. And what I found at the markets this morning are these beautiful little Lebanese cucumbers. If you can find these, fantastic. They've got a great crunch to them. Of course, you can just use the, the classic Lebanese cucumber and then just cut them into small pieces. But these are great little dippers. So we'll cut them, we well, cut them into quarters if you like, but I'm gonna leave them quite large. A few more. You can see this Greek style platter is coming into shape. And the last thing I love to add, you have to have a cracker with this. The crunch of a cracker with whipped tara masalata is so good. I've got some sesame wafer crackers here. Sesame is fantastic with this, but you could use whatever cracker you like. And I'm going to pile a good amount of those, one sleeve. There, that is the ultimate dip. That's enough for an entree. It's rich, it's whipped, it's fluffy. It's so good with a combination of the cucumbers there, crunchiness of the crackers. Give homemade tara masalata a go and throw out that pink stuff. It's not the real deal.